Hey guys, it's Chuck again, back with another refrigerant checkup. Uh, today I want to talk about conversions from 404 and R22 to R449A uh, XP40. Uh, one of my earlier videos, I went through some of the proposed regulations in California, uh, and I made the point that saying based on their uh, proposed rules for existing installed systems, there was going to be a, a fairly large need to convert a lot of the 404 507 systems to a lower GWP solution to keep those operating. And I mentioned R449 is one that a lot of people have converted to already. It's about a 70% reduction in GWP straight up from doing that conversion. Um, I also want to make note that R22 conversions are still going on. And R22 conversions are important that you move in the right direction as far as global warming potential. A lot of people were doing R22 to 407 early on, but that's actually going up in GWP. That's the wrong direction. So you want to pick something like 449, which is also a good replacement for 22 uh, for your R22 conversions as well as 404, uh, 507. So uh, even though we're, both of those can be uh, converted to run on the same product, the things you need to do are uh, different depending where you're starting at. Uh, so I want to show a video clip here from one I did uh, a few years ago uh, detailing the differences between those two conversions. And once, that done, once that's done, I'll come back and uh, tell you how to go from there. Um, also, before I run this clip, I will mention we have very detailed retrofit guidelines for 404, 507 conversions, as well as other detailed guidelines for R22 conversions. I will put links to both of those uh, detailed conversion documents in the comments below. Let's take a quick look at some of the major differences. For R22 systems with mineral oil, you need to change the oil to PoE like you would with any other R22 conversion. 404A systems should already be on PoE, so long as the oil is in good condition, no change needed. Second, elastomeric seals. R22 impacts the seals you're going to need to replace them again like you would in any R22 conversion. No issue with 404 and the seals. The third key item is the expansion devices. For electronic valves, they simply need to be reset with the appropriate set point. For TXVs on R22 systems, the mass flow and suction pressures are very close matched. So other than a slight tweak to set the superheats, no changes are needed. For 404A systems, particularly medium temperature systems, significant change to the TXV adjustment will be required, turning it down to prevent floodback, perhaps even changing out the power header sensing bolt. All the major valve manufacturers have developed guidelines and recommendations for using their products with our new XP40 refrigerant, so you can refer to the guidelines from any of those manufacturers for further guidance. The last key item is managing the discharge temperature. XP40 has a discharge temperature that's lower than R22, but higher than 404A. So for R22 systems, no change is needed. We recommend leaving in place any high temperature mitigation apparatus that may have been installed, like liquid injection. It probably won't run much, but you should have it in place just in case. Again, all the compressor manufacturers have developed guidelines for dealing with the discharge temperature of XP40 during 404A conversions and any mitigation they run, depending on the compressor models, operating conditions, and the system particulars. And I recommend you go to the OEM for guidance on their solutions for their equipment. So, depending where you're starting from, new equipment, R22, 404A, or even something like HP80, you may have a different pathway to end up on XP40, but thousands of supermarkets have been converted and operating globally today with more being converted all the time. And these systems, many operating around the world for several years at this point, continue to tell a good story when it comes to energy. Many types of systems and designs operating all over the world in all types of climates all helping to reduce the environmental impact by reducing energy usage. Not only lowers energy bills, but also reduces the carbon footprint associated from energy usage, all achieved by putting XP40 into the system. 
Okay. Well, uh, just to summarize, uh, you know, R22 conversions, you basically have to deal with the oil and elastomeric seals. Uh, the 404, 507 are already on POE, so you don't really have to deal with the oil. Uh, the seals are, should not be an issue because it's the R22 that affects the seals. Um, but you do need to look at the discharge temperature and maybe some of the medium temp uh, power elements on the TXVs. Uh, I hope this information was helpful. There have been uh, thousands and thousands of these conversions done worldwide. Uh, so if you haven't done any yet, you're not uh, on the bleeding edge. Uh, but if you haven't done any, you may need to get started uh, sooner rather than later, depending on your uh, installed base footprint, uh, what refrigerator you're running, what regulatory landscape you can see out in front of you. Uh, but in any event, our tech service team is ready to help. You can reach out and I will put that contact in the comments below as well. Uh, but we have a team of engineers very experienced in helping people uh, understand what to do, what not to do when you're doing these conversions and we'll be glad to help you out as well. Again, thanks. Uh, thanks for checking out the video. Anything else you want to hear, want to talk about, please feel free to reach out. I'll be glad to uh, bring in some experts, uh, get you the information you need. Take care. Talk soon.